So I had the privilege of sharing this morning. I actually want to share a scripture that challenged me this morning as I read it. Again, I, this week as I was putting it together. This scripture is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. If you have your Bibles, and that's on the screen. And it states this. Let each of you not only in his own interest, but the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is and was in Christ Jesus, whom though he was, was in the form of a God, excuse me, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. He emptied himself to be a form of a servant. If I can encourage you this morning, or the word I want to share this morning, if I can title the message, would be this. Are you open to empty? Are you open to empty? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this morning as I speak. It's not my words, not my thoughts, but it's you speaking through me. But I pray, Father God, every ear watching online or in this building that came today, they came expecting. And Father God, you said if we hunger and thirst, you would fill us. And so, Lord, I ask this morning, we come hungry, we come thirsty. Fill us with your presence, fill us with your word that we leave here different as we came in. We love you, God, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen. amen. There's a story of a martial arts teacher who was teaching a student how to defend himself. As he goes through this training, he asked his master, sensei, master, I wanna know more about the things of God. How can I find out about the more of God? And so the master took a tea kettle and started pouring the tea into his cup, and to the point that it starts to full and run over his cup onto the saucer, but then proceeded to go further from the saucer to the ground. But the master continued to pour and pour. The student finally said, stop, 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 master. The tea is spilling over. The cup can't take it anymore. The master looked at his student and said, you are so full of yourself that there's no room in your life for God. It is not possible for you to learn the ways of God until you learn to empty yourself. Could it be we being Christians that love God, could it be us that attend church? Could it be that we can come every day and receive and, and be a part and take things for granted to the point that we are so full, but yet we're not empty? I started thinking about that this morning. What would the church look like of people that were hungry and empty? Or let me put it this way, we all want fulfillment. We want to be full and filled of fullness that God has in our life. But we can be so full of stuff that we can miss God. Let me say it this way, in other words, you can have a full schedule. You can have a full work, a full life, a full marriage. Speaking of marriage, I celebrated 28 years of my wife yesterday. 28 years of a happy marriage. Yes. Love you. Yes, that beautiful lady there. And I, let me just say this. I was honored to have my kids worship with me today with us and then playing the drums and singing. And it, I don't get a chance to have them here all the time. So I'm a very possessive dad right now, excited that they're here. Amen. So praise God. It was a blessing. They worked out at the same time I'm here. Love y'all. Peace. All right. Back to the note. So full of a schedule, full of life, full of sports, full of timing, full of sleeping, full of events, full of evenings, full of hangouts, full of video games, full of everything. You know, our mind gets full, our life gets full, our laundry gets full, our trash gets full. <laughs> but we get full and we live a life of fullness and there's a lot happening in our lives so time to consumes us to the place that we forget to put God. And I felt the Holy Spirit saying, just like it alluded to Pastor Jeremy, we've been talking the last couple of weeks, are you making room for me? Are you making room for me in your busy life, in your busy schedule? Or are you just taking for granted that I'm there? It can happen. It can happen easily. And I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to make room. Room. So if you take your notes, number one, the first note I have on the screen is, empty yourself of self. In other words, me, myself, and I has to get out of the way. Self, like John 3, 3.30 says, he must increase, but I must what? Decrease. Jesus always exemplified the example of emptying himself before people so God can use him. Even though we know he's a son of God, he was still humbled enough to come as a form of a servant to meet the needs of the people. 
even though he was 100% God, 100% man, but yet he showed us the way to live and to empty ourselves of self. I have this jar, and if you guys don't know me by now, I'm very visual, so you're gonna see a lot of visuals, okay? But I have this jar, and, and I, I started thinking about this life, the vessel, like us, like a jar, like we can be full of stuff, so much stuff can be full in here. And I, I'll give you an example, we can be full of pride. We can be full of um, clutter, full of debris and busyness. We can be full of sin. And yet it covers up our life to the point there's no room for God. Or we can have an empty jar that says, okay, God, I make room for you so I can worship you. I make room for you so I can pray. I make room for you so I can serve. I make room for you so I can love. I make room for you, God, so I can be used. I believe God challenges every day. I'll have this screen on this, behind me on the screen, you'll see a picture of the Dead Sea. And if you know anything about the Dead Sea, it's a very rich, uh, salty body of water. Yet the Dead Sea has all these estuaries and rivers that flow into this body of water. The cool thing about the Dead Sea, it has a lot of salt. The bad thing about the Dead Sea has so much salt, there's no life. I started thinking about that. Could that be us? We can have so much salt, but there's no life. We can have so much of God, but yet we don't have an outlet for the water to go. In other words, that water has so much salt, there's no life in the, the water. Yet, God doesn't want us to be a conduit me, uh, just to cold off the water and be stagnant. He wants us to be a flow and an agent of flowing and pouring out. In other words, we don't just collect just to get. We distribute because God works through you. Let me say it again. I don't want to be just a consumer. I want to be a producer. So God can use me. Now, it's not just, I'm not talking about just money. And when everybody says blessing, we think about money. It could be your time, it could be your talent, it could be your treasure, it can be your love, it could be your affection, it could be your time for somebody beyond yourself, out of your schedule, so full of life that we have to pour out and say, okay, God, who do I need to pour into? Yes, Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine, verse eight. This is the Amplified, I love this version. It says this, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance, that's the blessing, to you. Why? So that you always, under circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete efficiency in everything. But why? Abundance in every good work and act of charity. What does that mean? God doesn't want to just bless you just for you. He wants to bless you so you can receive a blessing, but the blessing is beyond you. Yeah, God, I, I learned this about God. If God can trust you, he'll use you. If you're empty, he'll pour out. If you're hungry, he'll fill you. If you want more, desire more, he'll give it to you. But I also know God's a gentleman. If you want nothing to do with him, he'll stand there and wait and wait until you say, God, I need you. And I started thinking about this act of charity or this good work or giving out. I thought about this like it's almost like a poverty, stingy mentality. Me, myself, and I, it's all about my jar being full. Or the Dead Sea thinking that everything comes to me and there's no flow out. You know, you put too much salt in one area, it kills the grass. But when the salt is spread, grass grows. Makes you go, hmm. Number two, you empty yourself by pouring. So it's not just realizing self has to get out of the way, but not only does self have to get out of the way, but as I'm empty, God wants to pour. I started thinking about this. Pouring. Jesus poured daily. Jesus gave daily. Jesus loved daily. Jesus was able to be, a, be used of his father. He was willing and able and said, God, not my will, but your will be done. God, what can I be do? What can I do? How can you use me? How can you pour into me? God, I'm ready. I'm a vessel ready to go. 
the first miracle in the Bible, you know the story. The wedding. Now, this is not a real pot, and those pots were huge back in the day. I can't bring one of those here, okay? So I'm using a miniature version, all right? But I can see the story, and I want you to catch this, because when we, we read this story, we, we miss the miracle. It's not just the miracle to the place. The wedding was done. It goes towards the end. The best wine was gone, but there was more wine, but there was no wine left over in here. And Jesus talks about, oh, this is crazy. They come to Mary and say, Mary, uh, uh, do we bother Jesus? Like, there's no more wine. Like, what's up, right? Yo, we need the wine, right? And she says this, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Whatever he tells you to do. So they grab these pots. They're full of water. I want you to catch this. The miracle only took place when the disciples put their hand on the pot. Jesus could have said, be done. He could have said, more pots. He could have done all that. What he did was, he said, tell the disciples to go back and to draw from the pots. And when they were obedient to go and put their hand to the plow, the miracle took place. You guys catch that? Most of us are sitting in church going, God, why you're not moving? And God goes, why you're not moving? God says to us. No, I'm, I'm a little old school, but I remember the days when God used to do crazy things in services. How many people used to jump on chairs, run through aisles, I see people get slain in the spirit, get healed, delivered? And we go, those were the days of the past. No, those days God still wants to see happen again. But the question is this, are you hungry enough or empty enough for God to do it? I sometimes feel we get married to our chair. And I'm not going to pick on anybody, but some of you guys, you're married to that chair. Somebody sits in your chair, it's on. <laughs> but hear me out. Could it be we spiritually sit in a chair waiting for God to do something and God's asking you to go? My best days, and I'm, I don't want to get emotional, but my best days when I was serving in kids' ministry. You know why? Because they can't pay me back. But God's promises that he'll, if you take care of the little ones, I've seen the hand of God move in kids' ministry. I've seen the hand of God move in youth ministry. Why? Because God will repay back for the things you sow into their lives. When those who are hurting, you, sp you, sp you take your time and treasure, and God blesses you. That's why I love the Dream Center. We're going out ministering to people. Why? Because we are an example of a vessel that God wants to pour through and serve his people. Last time I checked, Jesus is not walking across the earth today. We are his vessel. Yes. Amen. So the miracle that happened at the wedding. And then I read other stories that I'm visual, so I, I want to talk about it. But uh, if you have your notes, again, number three, somebody's miracle was waiting on my obedience and my effort to pour. Let me say it again. Mary says, whatever you do, whatever he says, do it. See, filling jars, filling vessels takes work. And I have the stage, so I'll just say it, and I'll ask forgiveness later. But we expect the pastors to do everything. And last time I checked, our job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. So yes, filling jars is hard work. It's messy. It takes work. It could be painful at times. And we sometimes think it's for the most called, the most anointed, and it's not true. I really believe God wants us to just get it done. But we're waiting on God to tell us, and God's saying, I'm waiting on you. You know, I, 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 I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. When we pray, we're sometimes asking God for a green light. And I think we should change our prayers for a second. We should be doing and asking God for a red light. He'll catch you later when I say, he'll, he'll settle. Because they're waiting for, because here's the thing, and when God does speak, we still question it. God, I want a green light. God, you know what I want. I want a green light, green light, green light. God, give me green light, green light, green light, green light. And he goes, green, green. You're going, is that you, God? 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 Come on, let's be real. You can say amen or say oh me. 
Okay. No, what is God saying? Do, go, preach, minister, love, serve, give. I'll tell you when to stop. I'll tell you when to stop pouring. Whew. Number four, when I pour, God opens the door for more. You know, we want personal, we want revival. Everybody's talking about revival. You know, if everybody in this church serves, there'll be revival in this church. For real. See, refreshing others refreshes you. See, God is only responsible for refreshing me as I refresh others. We know, read that scripture. And then I hear the story of the widow. And she's needing a miracle. And she goes to the prophet. I want you guys to hear this. And the prophet says, what do you have in your possession? So we pray for more. God, I want more oil, I want more oil, I want more oil. What do you have that I've already given you? He says, go and find. And you read the script, I'm not have time to read it, but he says, he says, go borrow empty vessels. And then he says, go to your neighbor's house and find empty vessels. That's the key, empty. And he says, once you fill them, put aside the full ones, and once you have no more vessels to fill, guess what? The oil stopped. Can you hear me for a second? Could it be that the oil's not flowing like it used to be because we're not empty enough for God to move through it? I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus enough to be empty? Do you love Jesus enough to reach out? Do you love Jesus enough to be the hands and feet of him? Do you love Jesus enough to let be empty so the oil can flow in your life. Jesus specializes in filling the empty. He says, those who hunger and thirst, they shall be filled. Let me translate it another way. Those who are empty and desire to make room for me I will fill you. Amen? You guys like these Bible stories? I do. Okay. <laughs> so we have this story of this young man who came to the big sermon on the place where everybody's hanging out. And I love that because we come to church, we're all hungry, right? We want to hear what God has to say. And so as they're at this place and all 5,000 women and children show up and they're, they're hungry, and, but they start getting physically hungry, right? And look what the disciples say that sounds like a typical Christian today. <laughs> Lord, it's 12.08 and I'm hungry and Jason's still talking. Send them away so they can go eat. Jesus saw not only their physical hunger, he saw their spiritual hunger. Can we be just like Jesus to see vessels that are empty, but yet we're so busy and full that we don't even see it? Send them all away. Jesus says, no, no. Look what he states right here in the scripture in verse 16. He says, he, he says no, don't send them away. Give them something to eat. What do we have? Oh, Lord, all we have is a couple of loaves and some fish. Check this out. I love the visuals. I, this is not real bread. Just let you know. It looks tempting. Though. Who's hungry right now? Who likes some fish? Come on now. All right. um, but check this out. He only fed them when they were hungry. Let that sink for a second. Jesus took care of their needs when they were hungry. So he took what he had, there's no substitute. They were, and he takes what he has, and I love this part. He gives thanks for what they have. And the miracle took place when he gave it to the disciples, and when the disciples started to grab it, it started to multiply. Are you guys catching this? It wasn't Jesus who performed the miracle. 
He just thanked God for what he had. The miracle took place when the disciples put their hand on it. What would have happened if they would have walked away and said, y'all need to go eat? They would have missed the miracle. I'm not done. The story of the woman of the well. She was there, noontime, high noon, why? Hiding, so she won't be seen. She meets Jesus. Jesus not only read her mail, but he knew her story. And then when he goes to her, he, 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 he starts to like, almost like, point out things that she knows, but how do you know? But then you know, and oh, I want to know more. Why? She goes to a well. She meets the living well. The living well sees her brokenness. She's empty. The living well pours to her that day. When she meets the living well, the next well, who was empty, is now filled leaves that place full, going back to town to guess what? Pour some more. Could it be? Could it be? We're going to be just like that lady. I'm not saying in the sin she was in, but she was hungry. She desired more of God. It amazes me that church folks have the hardest things, that, the hardest miracles to take place and we're so used to it. When you go on the mission field and you're doing outreach and people are just hungry, we see more miracles happen there. Why? Because they're hungry. They're empty. Religion can keep you bound, but emptiness can keep you see God's hand move. Amen? So what's the whole point, Pastor Jason? I wanted to step on your toes this morning. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. I'm almost done. If the worship team could come out, that'd be great. And Jeremiah talks about two evils that take place. Number one, he says, the peop my people committed two evils. They forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hew themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold no more water. What do you mean, Pastor Jason? Could it be we're so used to the fountain we take advantage of the fountain that we miss the miracle? Could it be that we can be so caught up with Christianity? I'm not just saying in a bad way, but we get so religious in our way of doing things that we miss the opportunity for God to pour. They had cracked cisterns or broken cisterns that could not hold any water. So there's people in this room that your cistern's good and it's great, but God wants to pour more. Or there's some of you guys in this room that your cistern is broken and cracked and God wants to mend it or wants to give you a new container for the water to flow. Right. Solomon talks about Ecclesiastes that vanity of all vanities, all vanity is empty. In other words, he's saying in another translation, it says this, that emptiness of all emptiness keeps you empty. And Solomon found that out, that nothing, all the riches and the ways of the world that he could have had, but nothing can fill the void of God in his life but God. And then there's a statement here found in 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 9. I'm just doing it for the sake of time. But it says this, that king of Egypt came against Jerusalem, and they took all the treasures from the house of the Lord. And instead of keeping the gold inside the treasures and in that place of the house of the Lord, they substituted it for bronze. And he was asking God to bless that, this place, and God said, I will not bless this because you substituted what was right for something that was not. Could it be that we try to make things happen and God's trying to tell us, get back to the place where it used to be? Get rid of yourself so I can move. Um, I hate air mattresses. Anybody? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because I don't care how expensive the air mattress is, every time I buy one, I always find a hole in it. Anybody? 
isn't it the most frustrating thing when you put an air mattress together and by two in the morning, you're on the ground? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Can you just lift your hand and tell me that happened to you? Okay, all right. And so, like, we try to patch it. We try to find the hole, put it in water. Any bubbles coming out of it, right? But I, I don't know about you. I don't care how many patches you put on that thing. If there's a hole, it's going to sneak out somehow. And I think of our life that way at times. Things are deflating in front of us, and we can't even see until we get to the point that we're down at the ground. And we're saying, God, why aren't you patching me? Why aren't you taking care of this hole in my mattress? And God goes, get rid of the mattress. I can't keep on fixing something you keep on putting holes in. Fill me, Lord. Fill me. Last but not least, come on, worship team, come behind me. You're good. I'll tell this last story, and I'm just going to, I believe I'm, I'm going to be obedient with the Lord speaking and saying, but... The story in the Bible of Jairus, and he comes to Jesus, a man of the cloth, a man who is a priest, humbles himself. Matter of fact, he empties himself in front of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, my daughter is dying. And then, God, of course, he gets the attention of Jesus. But then in the middle of the attention of Jesus, here comes a lady with an issue. I don't know about you, but I've prayed many times asking God to do something and God touches somebody else and I'm going, God, what happened? Like, I just told you my stuff. And meanwhile, God heals this lady and Jairus didn't quit. Hear me out. He was still an empty vessel. And he hears the news that not only is she dead, oh, she was dying, but now she's dead and there's no hope. But he pours his heart out and Jesus says this. I want you to catch this. Take me to your house. Take me to your house. And again, I have the mic, but hear me out. We're asking God to move and see more miracles in our family, but if you don't take Jesus to your house, it's good to do it here. But God wants vessels that are empty, not just at the altar, not just in church, not just when you serve, but when you are serving your family, when you're serving your spouse, when you're ministering to your family, your neighbor. Take me to your house. And I love this part. You know the rest of the story. I'm just going to just repeat it. But it says this. As they get to the house and they hear all the full vessels complaining. She's dead. There's no hope. Don't bother the master. Jairus goes. He, he closes the door. He says, close the door behind you. Take people like, like faith that would believe and trust just like you do. Listen, I'd rather hang out with eagles and buzzards. Amen? And so they close the door. And he's standing there. And look what he does. He was not afraid to show the love that he had for his daughter in front of the master. There are students in this church, kids in this ministry in this church, they need to see empty vessels at home. Why is my kid not responding the way he needs to respond? Why isn't he doing the things I'm asking to do? Maybe, just maybe, you're too full. And we're raising full kids to be full vessels and forgetting that these are empty vessels so God can pour through. Because God wants to move. If you're a grandparent, be an empty grandparent, a vessel that God can use. If you're a mom and dad, be an empty vessel that God can use. If you're a brother or sister or aunt or uncle, a pastor or a leader, be an empty vessel that God can use. Trust me, God wants to pour in empty vessels, and God will do more if we just come before him humble and say, God, I lay aside my pride, I lay aside my stuff, my junk, I give it to you, God. I want to be used of you, God. Use me, let it flow through me. I don't want to be stagnant. I don't want to be a dead sea. Use me, because when the oil starts to flow, not only you flow through me, it flows over my family. God, I'm asking you right now. Come on, stand up with me this morning. Some of you guys in this room, You've been stagnant way too long. Jesus. 
I want to see more. I want to see more. I want to see more miracles. Listen, you guys bless me. Seeing you guys here as mom and daughter. Josh, your family. You guys, man. Deborah. You're allowing God to pour through you. I'm not confused. I'm just resting for a moment because the Lord's speaking. I want to have my prayer team come to the front if you can. If you're a pastor, come to the front. Prayer team also, please. There are some in this room right now that God's speaking to you. Because one day we're going to stand before God. One day. And I can't stand before God and say, I did not know. Let me say it again. Because my first ministry is not Park West. My first ministry is not the Church of God. My first ministry is not my ministry. My first ministry is my family. Because the Church of the Living God is the church family. And it's not just my blood family, it's my family in this room. I've never seen people go to a funeral and see a U-Haul behind the funeral procession. You can't take your stuff with you, but what you could take is family. Are you hearing me? Don't get so full that you miss the opportunity for God to use you. Don't be so full that you forget that God wants you to serve, to lead, be an empty vessel. So here's my call today, two things. Number one, if you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, I never gave my life to Christ, but today I know I gotta give it. I've been so full of myself and I need Jesus to step in my now to change my destiny. I need Jesus to take away the stuff that's keeping me so stagnant that I can't see the need in front of me. I'm asking, number one, come to the front. Number two, if you're here, hallelujah, if you're here and you've been dry, in other words, you've been stagnant to the point where you are a Christian, you love Jesus, but you're just there. And sometimes the needs pass us by and you feel the, the call, but you, you're hesitant because you don't know, what, God, is that me? And God's speaking to you today, yes, that's you. Go, go, be my hands and feet, go. But if you're here and you never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, can I encourage you? It was the best thing that ever happened to my life. I was so afraid, so ashamed. I couldn't be bold enough. I, could, I used to st st stutter a lot. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, all that stopped. God started giving me boldness. So I started working through my life. But it's only when I yielded myself to Him and when I opened my heart and said, Jesus, fill me. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. I know it's 1223, but the altar is open. They're going to sing a worship song. And if you're here and you need one Jesus too to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I'll jump down here and pray with you too. But I want to, don't leave here the same without it. Don't leave the same as you came in, amen? As they were, I'm gonna pray this close. I wanna leave the altar open. If you wanna to continue to worship, continue to worship. If you have to leave, leave. But I'm telling you, God wants to do something today. Amen? And forgive me, we didn't do communion. You can take that home, do it with you personally in your own time but I just believe the Lord is speaking and some of you guys need to be free today. That water needs to start flowing again. Let me say this one more time. Your miracle, somebody's miracle is waiting on your obedience. And so as we worship, come. Let me pray for you guys for dismissal, but again, the altar is open. Please don't leave unless you need it. Please, I, I, I beg you, God wants to do something. Let me just say this. I wasn't gonna say this, I know it's timeless, but I remember being in a worship service where I was a youth pastor and this one young man came in and he was sitting in the front and his leg, he, he uh, broke his leg playing basketball. And I remember we said, as you worship, forget about what's going on, as you worship, don't look around. As you worship, empty yourself. And I remember in the middle of worship, this young man was sitting in the front row, was surrendering to God. And he was crying out and he emptied himself before God. And when he put his knee on the ground, I heard a big, snap and as the worship was playing 
because he surrendered as his worship was playing he jumped up and said I just got healed I just got healed I believe that young man his name is Brandon Brandon was so full of himself he was mad at God because what happened to him and I said worship him he's good he's a good God and he worshiped God and that man young man got healed because he emptied his pride there's people in this room God wants to touch but lay aside your pride lay aside yourself be empty let God fill you amen father I pray for your people today I pray as they leave here today, Father, I'm asking Holy Spirit, do a work in them. Lord, pour into them so they can pour into others. I thank you, God, for people who are gonna be touched because of their obedience. People are gonna be healed because of their obedience. But Lord, it starts with us. I'm asking you, God, let us be a pure vessel, an open vessel, an empty vessel that you can pour through. Let us be a conduit of your blessing. But I'm asking, Father God, for homes. Homes today, Father God, need a touch. I'm asking Holy Spirit, move mightily on their behalf. I'm asking that you will use them this week to be a conduit of your praise. And I bind Satan who's a liar, wants to steal, kill, and destroy. We speak life and wholeness over every family, over every marriage, every over child, over every ministry, every job. That Jesus is Lord. But I thank you for those signs and the wonders and the miracles when they let you in, God, and what you're gonna do mighty in their life. We love you, Jesus.